Welcome to this lecture series in number theory. Last time we stated and proved the Chinese remainder theorem and I have written the general statement here just for recollection. And in this lecture we'll take an alternate viewpoint to the same theorem. We will reprove it in fact. We will restate it in a different way and reprove it. All right, so let's move on. Some problems for practice. And now let us get started. So first we will look at the phenomenon in a very small simple setting. So we have two relatively prime integers which I've chosen to be 2 and 3. Don't think of them as consecutive numbers, they are just two relatively prime numbers even though the example is very very simple to illustrate the full point. Now we define this map. The domain is the set of all the possible remainders that you get when you divide something by 2 times 3 or rather m times n I should say. m times n is 6. This is the set of all the possible remainders modulo 6. This is the set of all the possible remainders modulo 2 or m. And this is the set of all the possible remainders modulo 3 or n. Right? And what is this map? This map takes x as input and outputs this pair where the first entry is the remainder of x modulo 2. By when I write this I just mean, mean to say the remainder of x when you divide it by 2. Not a great notation, we should invent an alternate notation for this purpose. Maybe we should have say, uh, we, we should say rem x comma 2 or something. But I think any exposition uses this notation so it's fine. And similarly x mod 3 denotes the remainder of x modulo 3 when you divide x by 3. So that's the map, I I'm, I'm sure the map is clear and let us now explicitly describe this map by writing down the outputs corresponding to all the possible inputs. So if we feed in 0 we will get a pair, feed in 1 you, we, you, we will get a pair. Let's first fill up the first column. So the first column is of course denoting the first entry of any output. So let's fill up the first column and then we'll fill up the second column. So the first column, we will get alternates, alternately zeros and ones. So 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Why? Because what is x mod 2? It's the remainder of x modulo 2 which depends on the parity of x, meaning whether x is even or odd. When x is even you get a 0, when x is odd you get a 1. So this is how the first column will look like. The second column will look like 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Right, but the point that I want to make is that this is exactly the, the, the pairs that we see here 0, 0, 1, 1, so on and so on. These are exactly all the members of this set. So, for instance, 0, 0 is there, 0, 1 is there, 0, 2 is there. 1, 0 is there, 1 comma 1 is there, 1 comma 2 is there and these are all. So this is a surjective map and hence automatically an injective map because the sets on the left and the right side are the same size. This is a general phenomenon. Let's do one more experimentation and then we will prove a general fact. This time I'm taking ms3 and ns4. Again not very enlightening but okay. Here are all the remainders that you can get when you divide something by 3 times 4. All the remainders modulo 3 and all the remainders modulo 4. And uh, here I should have made one more column which I have somehow not made. So what is the map? First of all the, the map is x going to x modulo 3 comma x modulo 4. This is the map and I need to make one more column which is going to be going to be this great so let's fill up the first column the first column will be alternately or periodically 0 1 2 0 1 2 and the second column will be periodically uh, 1 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 But again the point is, this is a surjective map. Everything that is here you can find in this list. 0, 0 is there, let me mark them. So 0, 0 is there, 
जीरो कमा वन जीरो कमा टू जीरो कमा थ्री ना हो वन कमा जीरो वन कमा वन वन कमा टू वन कमा थ्री टू कमा जीरो टू कमा वन टू कमा टू एंड टू कमा थ्री सो ऑल द थिंग्स आर देर ऑल राइट सो नाउ लेट्स प्रूव द जनरल स्टेटमेंट सो सपोज एम एंड एन आर रेलेटिवली प्राइम पॉजिटिव इंटीजर्स एंड डिफाइन दिस मैप विच इज हैविंग द डोमेन एज द सेट ऑफ ऑल द पॉसिबल रिमाइंडर्स वेन यू डिवाइड समथिंग बाई एम एन द टारगेट इज ऑल पॉसिबल रिमाइंडर्स मॉड्यूलो एम टाइम्स और क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट ऑल पॉसिबल रिमाइंडर्स मॉड्यूलो एन एंड वॉट इज द मैप द मैप इज एज वी डिस्कस्ड इट्स x going to x mod m comma x mod n all right and then we claim that this map is a bijection all right so here is the proof enough to show that f is an injection why again because the size of this set is same as the size of that set so the injectivity of f is same as surjectivity of f is same as bijectivity of f so this is what we are going to do and uh, to do this say fx equals fy for some x and y in this range and we want to show that want to show that x equals y this will finish the proof okay but fx equals fy means what it implies x mod m comma x mod n equals y mod m comma y mod n which implies let's just compare the first two entries i mean sorry let's just compare the first entries of the two two tuples so that means x is congruent to y modulo m in particular this implies that x is congruent to y modulo m and x is congruent to y modulo n right if these two things are equal means what that x and y leave the same remainder modulo m and that's exactly the statement and similarly for this part so this means that m divides x minus y and the other thing means n divides x minus y but since m and n are relatively prime this means m times n divides x minus y which implies x is i can stop it here since x and y are in this range their difference is divisible by mn if and only if x is equal to y so this implies x equals y and we are done so let's see why this is equivalent to the chinese remainder theorem that we recalled in the beginning so suppose we want to see why two congruences one written modulo m and the other written modulo n have simultaneous solutions r and s are arbitrary integers we want to show that these two congruences have a simultaneous solution meaning we want to we want to show the existence of an integer x which satisfies both of them right but that's very simple because without loss of loss of generality we may assume that r is from this part and s is from that part right because r is necessarily congruent to a unique element from this part and s is well modulo m r is congruent modulo m to some element here and s is congruent modulo n to some element here so we may replace r and s uh, with their corresponding corresponding friends here without loss of generality and now by the surjectivity of f the existence of such an x is guaranteed just think about it the surjectivity of f immediately implies 
that th this, these two congruences have a simultaneous solution. So that proves the Chinese remainder theorem that we stated the last time. Well, we need to do one more thing. We need to show that any, uh, rather the set of all the solutions of these two congruences is unique modulo mn. Right, but that is clear by the injectivity of this function. The injectivity of this function shows that any two solutions are congruent modulo mn. So, so yeah, uh, whatever, just think about it. It's not a difficult thing. So this is just an alternate way to state the Chinese remainder theorem. And somehow the proof is much simpler when we do it this way. All right, so let's proceed. A more general statement. Uh, in the previous slide, we had two uh, divisors. This time we have an arbitrary number of them, some finite number of them, and we are assuming that they are pairwise relatively prime. Then this map, which goes from, well, what is D first of all? So this, this number D is the product of all the DIs. So D is just the product of all the DIs. And therefore, this is the set of all the possible remainders modulo D. This is the set of all the possible remainders modulo K. And this denotes the Cartesian product of all these sets, right? And we are claiming that this function is a bijection. The proof is exactly the same as in the previous slide. So this is the general, the probably the most general way we can state the Chinese remainder theorem in the context of elementary number theory. All right. Before we finish, I want to still refine the discussion a little bit. The way we stated the Chinese remainder theorem, it's a little bit contrived. It's not bad, but not fully satisfactory. So recall, a function from integers to any set A is said to be n-periodic if, if f of x plus n equals fx for all x in the domain. Right? So that's the definition of n periodic. We looked at it once, I think, in the second module or something. You may have forgotten. And further, suppose we are given an n periodic function, then we may denote the function like this. Then there is a unique map. There's a unique map F bar going from Z mod NZ to A, where the vertical map is the natural projection, such that this diagram commutes, which means F bar circled or composite pi is F. So if you have an N periodic map, there is a unique map F bar from Z mod NZ which makes this diagram commute where pi is the natural projection. So what is pi again? Let's recall x going to the equivalence class of x or the remainder class of x modulo n. Right? So these things we looked at earlier. And now the same thing as we discussed can be stated as follows. It's somehow a much more cleaner description and I would say a much better description. So define this map. We have some relatively prime integers m and n. In fact, for the moment, forget about that also. m and n are arbitrary positive integers. Then we define this map how we just send an integer x to the equivalence or the remainder class of x modulo m, comma the remainder class of x modulo n. That is the definition of the map f. And note that F is MN periodic, which just to emphasize means this, right? So this is an exercise. It's a very simple exercise. And therefore, by what we just said, we have this factoring. There's a unique map F bar which makes this diagram commute. And what is that map F bar? If you start with X, if you follow the horizontal route, where do you land? You land at this tuple. 
and if you follow the vertical route then you go here and now if, if you apply f bar you're bound to come to this point so what does f bar do it consumes the remainder class of x modulo mn and outputs the remainder class of x modulo m and the remainder class of x modulo n and this was exactly or more or less exactly the same description that we saw in the previous page where the only difference was instead of remainder classes we had remainders that was the only difference and that is what made it a little bit contrived anyway so this is really the map that we were considering in the previous uh, in the pre maybe the slide previous to the previous one and you can prove that this is an injection bijection in exactly the same way so it's just a change of language but i think this is a much better language and much more natural to even define this map this way define the horizontal map which is very very clear what it is and then it just factors through z mod M mnz to give us the map f bar that we somewhat little bit contrivedly defined in the previous to previous page if that is a word all right so with that i want to end this lecture as usual like comment share subscribe and i will see you next time